Welcome to Section 5, Creating Our Menus. Video 1, Setting Up Our Main Menu Widget and Level. In this video, we are going to prepare and design our main menu widget and create our main menu level. First, we are going to create a new widget blueprint inside our widgets folder, and we will name it Main Menu WB. Now, before we start designing the main menu, we are going to create a new level and name it Map Main Menu and organize it in a Levels folder. So, in our Content folder, we'll right-click and select New Level, and we'll name it Map Main Menu. And we're going to also right-click and select New Folder, and name it Levels. And we'll click and drag the Map Gameplay. While holding Control, we can multi-select objects or assets and drag them into the Levels. We'll move here. And now we have our levels in here. Let's open up our main menu level. Let's save selected. And as you can see, nothing is in here, which is what we want. Now, inside of our project settings folder, or if you want to go to edit project settings, in the maps and modes tab, our game default map we're going to set to our main menu. This will open up this map when the game starts automatically. Now we can actually start designing our main menu, so let's close the project settings and inside our widgets folder, in the main menu widget blueprint, let's compile and save. And so for the main menu we're going to have two buttons that will open the level, which will be a open level and a quit button for quitting the game, as well as some text letting us know that this is the main menu. So first let's start on that main menu text by bringing in from the comment folder or category. In the palette, we're going to drag in a text into the widget designer or viewport. And we're going to set its anchor to the top middle. And we're going to set its position to zero in the X and 150 in the Y. We're going to change its text to main menu. And we're going to change its alignment to 0 0.5 in the X and leave zero for the Y. We're also going to check size to content, which will resize the actual text box to the text letters. And we're going to set the size to 50. Now let's drag in something called a vertical box. Inside of our palette, let's search vertical box. Let's drag that into the viewport. We're going to set its anchor to the center. And then we're going to set its position to 0 in the X and 150 in the Y. Our size is going to be for the X 1000. And in the Y it's going to be 400. And the alignment will be 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. We don't need the size to content as this is what we want, which a vertical box will vertically align any widget components that are attached to it as a child. So if we dragged a text under the widget vertical box, it would automatically align it to a specific position vertically, and it orders them accountable as well. You will see in a moment. We're going to add in a button and drag it under the vertical box, like so, and as you can see it automatically created one and placed it at the top of our vertical box and automatically sized it. We're going to rename this button to our start button. You can right click and select rename or you can select F2 on your keyboard. We'll name this start button and we can also drag text into the start button. And as you can see it shows up and automatically resizes the text to be in the center. For the text we're going to tell it to be start game. We're also going to change its color from color and opacity to black so that way it's easily visible. We're also going to set its size to 40, and as you can see, the button resized automatically. And if you select the button again, let's change its size from Auto to Fill, and it will fill out the vertical box. We'll be adding to it, so that way it's not completely filling up the screen. Now, right-click, Copy, and then select the vertical box, right-click, and Paste, and it will add another button. This one will be our Quit button. So we're going to rename the button to quit button, and we're going to change the text to quit to desktop. 
And as you can also see, the button originally that was filling up the entire vertical box now is resized to be halfway, but it's vertically the one above the quit button. And this is because we have it arranged that way. If we move this one to be above the start button, like so, it automatically reordered it. And we can use these arrows as well to reorder it again. Now let's add some space to these buttons so that way they're not so close. Inside of the palette, let's search for a spacer. And let's drag it into the vertical box in between the start button and quit button and select the spacer and let's set its Y to be 150. And now they're spaced out, which it looks pretty good. It's very simple, you know, something to set up. You can add more to this if you choose to. You can change the images for the buttons by going into the style and they have specific images for normal, hovered, pressed, disabled, etc. You can change the color, etc. That sort of thing. You can look up documentation on changing the UI and designing for the UI inside of the Unreal Engine documentation page, which is freely available on the internet. Now let's save and compile. And now we can actually test this temporarily by going into our map main menu. In Blueprints in the top toolbar, select Open Level Blueprint, and in Begin Play, let's drag out of this and select Create Widget. We will select the Main Menu Widget Blueprint, and then drag out of the Resort Return value and add to Viewport. This will be temporary, so we can just at least test this. So select Compile, Save, and in our viewport, let's hit play. And as you can see, the button showed up, but we can't actually press them. Let's add the option to show the mouse by get player controller. This is all temporary, by the way. We'll be removing this in the next video. And drag out of the return value and select show mouse. For set show mouse cursor, and let's check mark that to set it to true. Connect that to the add viewport, compile, save, and let's hit play. And now we have our mouse and we can click the button and it works. We also have the other UI because we are currently using the default game mode, which will automatically spawn the player, which will automatically also spawn the other UI. Let's actually clear this up now since we tested that the buttons are set up and they work.